Major General um, Thomas Sharpie. We're gonna from the U.S. Um, Air Force. You're basically the second in command, right, for Puerto Rico, um, of the rescue and recovery mission. Um, I want to talk about what you've seen. You know, obviously the impact of the storm, and basically, you know, tell me how this this you know operation compares to other experiences that you've had with other hurricanes elsewhere. So first of all, let me tell you how it happened. Uh huh. Uh, you know, we knew that the storm hit. Um, I watched it on the news. Uh huh. Um, I had no idea that. Uh, I knew that the category of hurricane, but I didn't. The pictures on the TV didn't show it just. So I found out around 11 o'clock that I needed that I was my services were needed here, uh -huh. and I left about four hours later. Wow! Okay. And flew all night to get here. Okay. Uh, about uh, 12 Wait, to 13 days from? ago. Uh, Where are you based? Deputy Commander of Air Mobility Command at Scott Air Force Base in Illinois. Oh, in Illinois. Okay. And so my, you know, my boss told me that I needed to go and. Uh, we, we left you know, like four hours later. Okay. Lots of packing. <laughs> Good to go. And then when I got here, uh, it was dark, and then I, when I got about an hour of sleep before I came into work, just so I could shower, and when I drove to, drove to the convention center, I saw a little bit of the devastation, and my heart sank. Mm -hmm. The next day I got to fly around the island, my heart sank further, and then today I just got back from Maya and Hamako uh -huh. and got to see the devastation driving and my heart sank even further. Okay. Um, it's devastating. So, I mean, is it getting any better? Or, uh, or? So the roads were clear. Uh -huh. um, you know, people were taking pride in their homes, cleaning them up, removing debris. Uh, you know, we have, so we first did, we opened up the airfields. Okay. As soon as the winds died down, we opened up San Juan. Okay. We worked with the FAA and the tower to get it so that we could take airplanes in here. And then from there, uh, we went to Roosevelt Road. Okay. Um, and then we opened up uh, uh, two more airfields and we're opening up some sea parks as well. Okay. So that we can get the troop of cargo into here as quickly as possible. Now, you have some impressive numbers here in terms of, of what you've been bringing in, in terms of assets. Can you give me um, maybe an updated figure of what's here already? So, uh, I won't specify the exact number of cargo because it changes. Okay. Let's just say that, you know, since hurricane season started, we've flown over 2,000 sorties uh, in this region, okay. and we've flown probably uh, close to 1,300 just here in Puerto Rico. Okay. What are you doing exactly? So we're bringing the supplies, right? Okay. It's an island nation. You know, the seaports were had some damage and they weren't assessed to be open right away. So we had to fly all of the, you know, over 13,000 people. Um, Probably, I think we, I think we've transported about eight thousand here. We've already had some on the island already here. Um, all of the uh, equipment and all this, and the majority of the supplies until now have moved by airline. Okay. Are you bringing more? I mean, yes, based on the need to, that you've seen. Yeah, we we will continue to provide airflow. The challenge is airflow is when you need it when it's critical, and it's obviously. Uh, uh, more expensive, you know, sure. a, a ship can bring a lot more and sure. it's a lot more affordable. Um, but our government has not spared any expense because we needed, we they asked us what we needed and we delivered it by air. And now we're going to try and hopefully um, bring more and more by sea because the, air, the sea ports are, sure. are getting more and more open and they have more capacity. Have you had the chance to talk to people on Absolutely. your outings? And what do you, you know, what, is, what are your thoughts? They're your proud, yeah. they're resilient. Uh, they're, they're not going to let this get to that. Uh, they're together. I mean, I was surprised at uh, how resilient they are. Um, you know, I just, when I went down to uh, Gamaya, uh, when I was driving up the coast, um, we stopped and saw some isolated homes uh, uh -huh. off the beaten path. And they were elderly, uh, an elderly family. And we stopped and gave them, we had some food and MRE and water, and we gave it to them. And then immediately, they took us across the street to a lady who was bedridden and shared with her some of the uh, goods that we gave to, to them. Wow. So that shows how, you know, they're in this together. And we're in this together. They're fellow American citizens. How would you compare this experience with other hurricanes so I, that I would say recently? that, you know... Because um, we look like we've been nuked. No. I mean, basically. In, the, in, the, in the time that I've been doing this, I've been in the Air Force for over 30 years. Uh, I haven't seen us put so much weight of effort, so many assets, so many resources into a humanitarian assistance disaster relief effort. 
like this. Uh, you know, I mean, like I said, we've been flying nonstop for over two weeks with, you know, all of our Department of Defense assets. And, 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 and the majority of it has been our Guard and Reserve partners. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Right. So through the EMAX that the governor had. So we're here uh, to support FEMA, who is supporting the governor. Okay. And, you know, we, tr you know, the challenge has been to coordinate and synchronize what the governor needs, what FEMA needs, and what the Department of Defense needs. So you've been working with FEMA on the on the drops, on the airdrops? I've been working with FEMA on getting the uh, all of the logistical efforts to, to okay. get this stuff here by air. Because because that has been kind of a challenging uh, point as well. Well, it's very difficult because when you look at, just look at the topography of this great island. Sure. I mean, you know, it's, it's not flat. Mm -hmm. um, um, and so some of the roads obviously have failed. Some of the bridges were washed away. And so we have some isolated communities. And so we're using air to get to those that we can't get by road. I mean, we've been doing an incredible job working with all the partners uh, here on the island and include our Department of Defense, Active Duty Guard Reserve, and our state, state guard partners to clear the roads. But there are some where if a bridge washed out, that there isn't a quick fix. So we've been using helicopters, you know, from across Department of Defense, Army, Navy, uh, helicopters, okay. Little Red Coast Guard, also uh, Customs and Border Patrol, oh, really? okay. um, other agencies across, you know, uh, um, you know, many different agencies who have helicopters here to coordinate to get the relief to those that need it the most that are isolated or hard to get to regions. And they've been doing, uh, you know, I got to fly with them yesterday, uh, doing an incredible job. Let me ask you, um, do you have any idea or would you care to take a guess as to how long you'll be here and working on recovery? Well, I, I, we're going to be here as long as we're here. You know, I, I won't put a timeline on it. Okay. You know, I, when I first got here, I used to. My goal was to get life back to normal for Puerto Rico. Okay. Uh, I don't However know. What, long that I don't, takes. and I don't know what normal is. Right. It's not this. No. Well, it's going to be different, right? Sure. And so, when I just looked at the devastation that I saw today, I just, I just look at the beautiful countryside and the trees and, and, and electricity and some of those things. It's some of the hard to get places on the coast. Mm -hmm. I just don't know how it's going to be quick. Okay. Have you been to Vieques and Culebra, the two island municipalities? I, have, I, I saw them from afar. You saw them, okay. Yeah. Um, because it, they're obviously just as devastated yeah. or even worse because they got hit twice. Right, right, right. No, I, I, you know, I've been meaning to get out there, but, you know, uh, my focus has been to try and get you know, here in the convention center because this is where all of the, yeah. the key agencies are to synchronize their efforts. You know, I try and get out a little bit just so that I see some of the results that we're doing. And, mm -hmm. and I've seen the fact that we take the supplies, we get them to the armies, and then they take them to the points of distribution within the municipalities. And so far, the two that I've seen have worked they're flowing incredibly well. Okay. You know, they're getting to the people, okay. and the Which people is... are very happy, and they they're in need. Okay. And to me, that's success. Is there anything that you you're seeing that must be done extra right now, or, do, or is everything flowing more or less? Uh, I think that you know we 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 are you know getting the majority of our assets here. You know, we and we're still bringing them in. Um, but I will tell you that the, the coordination when you have all these different agencies, uh, it can be difficult. Uh, there was a lot of learning that went on, and I think that we've worked very well together. Uh, you always have some, you know, opportunities to do it better. Um, but I will tell you that uh, there's nobody who's not working hard, and there's nobody who's not working together. How many? And to me, that means success. Now, let me. Can we run through the numbers? I, um, you know, you have. Um we're talking about Air National Guard assets. Are, have these numbers changed? 398 directly supporting Puerto Rico, 346 at the USBI. Um, are they more or less the same? Or? More or less. I mean, they change every day. I mean, we have those were just the Air Force numbers when you look at some of the Army and some of the Air National Guard and some of the reserve numbers. And then in terms of, you know, do you know how many tons of food and medication and generators and all that stuff? I, I have that, but it, it's changed. It changes every hour. It does. Every time an airplane lands, it, and I don't want to be insignificant, every time an airplane lands, like a C-5, for example, a C-5 can have, you know, uh, 300,000 pounds of cargo. I see. And so if I were to quote that, you know, I can, we can get, if you want, we can give you an, you know, an estimate based yeah. on right now. Yeah. I, I just don't want to, I just don't want to misquote it. Okay. You know, because it's I fair don't, enough, but it's, it, I, it's important. No, 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 it's, it's fair. I just, number. I just want to make sure that I give you the most accurate number. That sure. I have. And we can get that, you know, right upstairs in my office. No problem. Well, I certainly appreciate the time. Thank no, you so much. No, it's my pleasure. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you.